People who've seen nice people finally snap, what happens? This woman Mary I worked with was always pleasant and cheerful, said hello in the lunchroom, and was generally liked. She worked in finance and special projects. She said she wanted to retire in a few years, and she had been working there for 15 years. Her boss started pressuring her to complete our annual budget report faster, but this thing is huge and comprehensive and a figurative beast. Mary told the boss it would be ready in a couple of weeks, per the usual schedule. The boss said that it needed to be completed within one week to give to the higher-ups. Mary said it wasn't possible. Boss emailed Mary and carbon copied a bunch of co-workers and the assistant managers calling Mary out for a poor work ethic and for making the department look bad. Mary said it wasn't possible and didn't appreciate being bullied. She put in her notice to retire by the end of the week, leaving her boss high and dry. She was the only one who could do the budget report in a timely manner, so the department was double-screwed. Good for her. She was an assistant manager and was known for being soft-spoken. At a manager meeting, one of the general managers, who was known for being a total jerk to everyone, was going off on how every store should be run. Well, she snapped. You have the highest turnover rate out of any store in the district. You can't keep employees for more than six months before they just quit, all saying you were the problem. Maybe you should take that advice you're giving us and use it on yourself. My best friend had lost his mom to murder a few months prior when we were in the 10th grade. Somehow he had pulled himself together just enough to start going back to school. I don't know how he handled it with being an only child and growing up without a father. His mom was all he had. A kid that thought he was popular that got on everyone's nerves cracked wise to my friend's face about his mom's death. What he said isn't exactly sure. My friend threw him on the ground and punched him in the face multiple times. The end result was a broken nose, a broken left orbital, and my friend got kicked out of school. We were very grateful he taught him a lesson, but saddened it had to come at such a high cost. A long time ago, I used to do call center tech support for fairly complex issues. A really nice, quiet guy went through the same training class. He talked if you talked to him, but never went out of his way to chat. Right after training, the call center changes a ton of stuff. We start getting squeezed on the amount of time we can do documentation, how much research time we have, just metrics in general. It was utter bullcrap because the favorites got to go on smoke breaks as often as they wanted with the managers. We'd essentially be punished for that because we had to keep the average numbers in a certain area. He did all the right things. Talked to his manager, talked to their manager, then to HR. It kept getting worse, plus enforced overtime. Then he got a super long call, he was on it at least two hours, about a complex issue, and the customer was just straight up abusing him. But he had to take it because the managers wouldn't give permission to him to hang up and they were basically screaming at him to resolve this issue and get to his next call. But we couldn't end calls. The customer had to. One day, he just stood up, stepped onto his chair, then onto the desk, threw his headset on the desk, and sort of growled something like, F this, quietly. He looked around, staring people in the face, especially the people who took those long breaks and the managers. Then he walked out, and no one ever saw him again. Everyone was super quiet and afraid to move or say much of anything. Guy I'd worked with for about 10 years never could get ahead at work. Wasn't bad, but just didn't really excel. He was always kind, always ready to laugh and crack a joke. Never saw or heard him be mean. But apparently him and his wife were having some trouble, though I'd not heard him talk about it much. But one day, while his youngest was out at church with a family member, he flipped out and shot his wife, then himself. In middle school, my six foot two gentle giant friend, who was literally the nicest guy you'd ever meet, got teased about his mom by some short popular kid. My friend, no hesitation, picked him up by his shirt and slammed him against the locker at eye level and said, never talk about my mom like that. One of my favorite memories of him. An acquaintance of mine, Daryl, was always a quiet kid that bothered nobody. Given that he was six foot five and 250 pounds, he played football and was generally respected and liked. One day in Spanish class, the class clown was making his usual rounds talking crap until he got to this one girl, Nellie. He never really made fun of people of the other gender, so everyone around him was telling him to step off. But he kept going and finally got to the birthmark on her neck that was very large and dark red. He told her that it dropped her a few numbers down. At this point, just about everyone and their grandma in the class was standing up about to rush him, save for Daryl and a few others. Until Daryl got up, waltzed over to the class clown, picked him up by his hair, and said, and I quote, 
If you don't shut up right now, I'm going to put you through that wall, points to the nearest wall. He dropped the clown and walked away. A few seconds later, with his band of merry men behind him, the clown tries to jump Daryl in the middle of the class. Daryl then proceeds to elbow him across the room, run over, pick him up by the shoulder, and put his hands through the drywall right next to the clown's head. Security by this point was called, and both Daryl and the clown were arrested, with both only getting off with fines for damages. Every day, the spackle patch where the hole used to be humbles me. When I was a kid in high school, my group of like six friends were sitting at a round table in the cafeteria for breakfast. A table over, some girls had been tossing small chunks of their food in our direction. My one friend named M wore her hair in an unusual spiked up style, and I guess the girls at the table were trying to land food in her hair while cackling to themselves. Cue my quiet, sweet, introverted friend named K getting so angry, I swear steam was coming out of her ears. One of the girls had thrown a decent-sized piece of her egg patty at us, and it landed on the floor near Kay's foot. Kay proceeded to step on the egg patty, pick it up off the ground, walk over to the table of bullies, and shove the egg directly into the mouth of the one who had thrown it. This was such an amazing moment in my high school memory, I couldn't believe what I was seeing, as Kay was the last person I would have expected to do that. Of course, she did get in trouble, but she didn't regret it one bit. Back in fifth grade, I was super lucky to have the elementary school's favorite teacher. Every single student loved her. My class was always super loud and annoying. We were working on some assignment before gym class, and everyone was passing her off. She was only allowing students to go out if they finished the assignment. My slow butt was unfortunately one of the last kids in the room. This one student, who was a god-awful and annoying poop bag, was being way over the top. My teacher got up, put her hands over her ears, and just started screaming, Shut the F up! Just shut up! Shut up! Shut up! And she just stomped out of the room, still screaming with her hands covering her ears. All of us just sat there in horror. A couple of kids just left to go to gym class, and I sat there just trying to finish the assignment. Our principal came into the room a few minutes later, just telling the rest of us to go out for gym class. But she made the poop bag kid stay in the room with her. He was moved into the other 5th grade teacher's room after this. She was completely normal and fine after coming back, and there was nothing else that went wrong for the rest of the year. Just worked her butt off, and made all of us love her by her caring soul and all of that fun stuff. But that moment completely traumatized me. A lady where I used to work was subjected to constant harassment by a much older co-worker, and the company failed to do anything about it. He was showing up at her house, eventually forcing her to move house. After she moved into the new house, he bought the house next door. She arrived to work with a baseball bat and stopped at reception to ask if Tom was in. When they asked why, she calmly told them she was there to kill him. She walked upstairs to his office, reception called ahead and had him take the fire escape, and she instead demolished his office until the police arrived. She was not charged. The company and police knew she had announced her intentions to reception as a cry for help, so she didn't actually find him because it was clear that if she had found him, she would have killed him. She took some sick leave and eventually returned to work. And the company put her on a project with this guy as her manager, because screw protecting victimized women, right? Older brother's wedding. He's a very nice guy. Almost too nice. He had a horrible girlfriend. He adored her, though. She told him that he wasn't good enough and that she would break up with him unless he bought her this super fancy ring and married her. He did. The wedding was very stressful, and she was extra nasty. After they cut the cake, she got herself a huge slice and left him with none, telling him he should go on a diet. For context, he was underweight. He was working his way up to average. He snapped, threw a handful of cake at her pretty dress and hair, then told her to expect divorce papers to sign. He proceeded to scream, cry, and rant about how horrible she was and how she made him depressed. He's better now. They split up and live in different continents. Please like and subscribe if you've made it this far. I hope you'll enjoy the rest of this video and have a wonderful day. I had just started high school and there was a new kid. I was from a one primary slash one high school town, so all the kids already knew each other. He was a giant aboriginal kid who was quiet with no friends, so my friend and I befriended him. We always chatted to him and he was so lovely, always softly spoken and generally just so nice like holding doors open for us and bashfully smiling when we would go out of our way to be friendly to him. Anyway, he started getting picked on by the bad boy of our grade relentlessly. 
One day he snapped and beat him up with a garbage can and was expelled, and I never saw him again. One of my middle school friends, whom we'll call Bob, was about a half foot shorter than everyone else. Everyone was around five feet. He was an interesting, in a good way, dude. Interested in learning, played video games, was great to hang out with, but he looked scrawny. Didn't look like he could hurt anything, if I'm being honest. For some context to the story, our gym teacher was a jerk. Gave nicknames, some good, some bad, to everyone. He was always sarcastic, always berating everyone, speaking down to us instead of encouraging them. One day, the gym teacher says something about Bob's mom, which Bob's mom had fibromyalgia and some other conditions making her weak and unhealthy, not by choice. And something in Bob snapped. Bob completely took down this six-foot-five monster gym teacher. Gym teacher looked like he stood no chance at that time. They were quickly pulled apart, and Bob got expelled and had to move school, while the gym teacher was fired for fighting a student and being an overall jerk. There was a kid at my school in about seventh grade. His name was Frederick. He was loved by everyone, was so nice, and donated to charity regularly. Everyone knew him and respected him. One day, a new kid came to our school. We'll name him Josh. Josh was a big jerk. He hit people, pushed them around, threw food at people during lunch, just honestly a big butt. Well, one day he decided to pick on Fred by doing his normal crap, and Frederick just went ballistic, punching, screaming, kicking. They were both suspended for two or three days. After their suspension, they both came back, and Josh had a black eye, bruises on his arms and left leg, and he looked awful. Josh thought everyone would start to hate Fred after what he did to him, but nope. Everyone was tired of his crap and picked on him for how bad he looked. Fred was just loved more for this incident, though he told me he got grounded for a week. Freshman and sophomore year, the same kid gave me crap at the bus stop and the whole walk home. Every single day, nonstop harassment, just kept needling me constantly. So many people asked me why I took it, but I was just really shy and passive at that age. I stayed quiet and didn't react. One day, the kid tried to push me into some bushes, thinking it'd be funny. He'd never gotten physical before. I grabbed his wrist and put him on his butt. He went down on his back, and when he tried to get up, I put the past two years into a single punch that put him right back down. Next day in school, Kid had the darkest black eye I'd ever seen. He wasn't at the stop for the next few days, and when he started taking it again, he never said another word. I shocked a bunch of people, but turns out lots of other kids hated this guy and were jealous I gave him what he had coming. It did a lot of good for me, and the positive reaction kind of helped me come out of my shell. 10 out of 10 would punch again. I mentioned this in another thread. Samoan friend, happiest, most friendly guy you ever want to meet. Some guy said something about his sister, and of course it made him mad. My friend went after him and caught him, punched him about three times, and we realized he was going to kill him. It took three of us normal-sized guys to hold his arm back from hitting the guy one more time. We told the other to run, like, run right now. He did. Our friend was mad at us for a while for stopping him, then he went home. The next day, it was as if nothing happened. He just went back to being a super nice guy. My friend did everything for what had been her childhood best friend, dedicated her entire future to being with her and helping her stay on track. But that friend was incredibly toxic, constantly complaining about what were indeed crappy circumstances, but to a point of excess and exaggeration that she became self-consumed. Constantly complained about how unfair everyone was and how insecure she was. One day, that toxic friend decided to cut everyone off to hang out with more popular kids who were, in reality, just the weird incel type of gamer boys. But since she was one of those not-like-other-girls, she didn't see this. My friend, as gentle and quiet and wonderful as she is, finally snapped. When my friend inevitably came crawling back, she didn't respond, and instead joked and poop-talked her to me. It was the first time I had seen her genuinely upset and display anything besides a calm humor. Click on one of the videos you see on the screen now, or a Karen will sue you.